Recording. See if it stops Okay. I think you have an old version of the slides. Although uh, I just uh, well, hold on. So I basically oh, there we go. Yeah. Okay. I just started where you left off. Okay. So, it's modern here. Modern is uh, I guess. Okay. I just so I, think here. I think someone better. <laughs> Unless I'm not doing it, I don't know. Hey, Warren, should we start? Yeah. Can you hear the room at all? Warren, can you hear me? Okay. Oh, that was terrible. Uh, are you on the right network, Amanda? So can I try to speak again, Oru? Yeah, I can hear you clearly. Now it now it sounds good. You were completely bottled up uh, by the, in the first attempt, first try. Yeah, I didn't change anything on my end, so. Maybe the network's behaving better now. That's all. Okay, where are we? Okay, next slide. All right. So, considering we moved away from from uh, add stream to add transceiver, and we now have transceiver stats with MITs. It's it's a bit backwards to have a stream RC media stream stats, which is just the stream identifier and relationship to track IDs. We we remove tracks. Tracks don't exist. So I propose we remove this track as well. Um, proposal A is that we you know, there's there is still this notion of, of stream identifiers. It's part of the sender and the receiver. I have a slot, a stream slot. So proposal A is remove the old the media stream stats, but keep stream identifiers on sender and receiver stats. Uh, proposal B is say, well, why, who cares? Just remove it. Any opinion? Given that, given that it's uh, not very hard to move them back, why why, why not just move them to the obsolete section and let them die there? Do that. I mean, if, so, if someone finds the uh, need for it, they can ask for it and move, move up again. Does anyone implement that? Yeah, I think so. Right, so we don't care to add the center. Well, the same comment as the direction is that yeah. unless it changed uh, between when you call guest staff and when it came back, it should be good enough to look it up directly. Okay, so let's remove it. Any objection? Yeah. Next slide. Um, next thing is the ID. Are we loading a resolution? Yeah, um, oh. yeah, that's correct. Oh. Uh, um, so IDs are, it's not specified how, how you generate them, but it's uh, they need to be the same across get stats calls so you can look up the same sets object. Um, and but because it's unspecified, um, we've been uh, implementations have been just coming up with strings like uh, RTC media stream track underscore sender underscore one. The problem is you can sort of predict predict the IDs even before you call guest sets, which means that some applications might start relying on implementation specific behavior. Or like if the ID suddenly changes, their their application breaks. Uh, so the, I propose that we require. Uh, IDs to be unpredictable. Um, I think exact wording of the PR can be discussed in the PR, but I want to propose that we we make it basically uh, random looking. Um, and yeah, 
right? One suggestion from Harlow is to use base 64 or SHA of the predictable string. I still think you need to seed it somehow so that it's different across sessions. Uh, otherwise, people might remember that yeah, the first track is always great. the same random string. Um, but anyway, so this might break if applications don't rely on this, but I say we do it anyway. Any objections? So it must not be predictable, meaning also, uh, so it can be uh, not understandable, but still predictable. Okay? Um, um, so it can't even be. So what Harold's suggesting would make it hard to remember. <laughs> right, but it would being, be but predictable. Would be the same. Yeah, so I think you need to solve it with some random number. Yeah. Okay. Right, but that's my addition. But. Yeah, I think, I think so, solving it with this, uh, it's like it, it's just just fine. I mean, yeah, I pull this out of my act to uh, to say generating a monopoly is not hard. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's not that. We get next, next slide. Um, actually, let's run the next slide. Need a test. <laughs> I'm sure everything is test. Let's go to this. This sir. Um, Currently, we have no way of, uh, we don't expose the encoding parameters that, um, or encoding parameters. And um, so the proposal here is that we uh, expose the same information as, as is available in the in get parameters API. Um, did you skip a slide? I did skip a slide. Yeah, so what what we what what this is more like bonus things and, and I, for your previous uh, objections about current direction, you might have uh, objections about this thing. But so the the, the thing we we must uh, uh, we really want to have is bits because right now you have multiple outbound RTP uh, stats objects, one per single cast layer, and you don't know which one is which. Uh, so you'd have to just guess based on resolution or something, but that's not really reliable. So we definitely want reds, and if we add red, either we do this, this slide as, as we add all the things, or the alternative, which would be a previous slide, is only add the red. Um, and I, I was going to propose that we add encoding parameter stats. Uh, that because, like max bitrate, for example, it's useful. You know, why am I getting this bitrate? I thought my network is great. I mean, it's it's, it's useful information to see um, these like max bitrate, max frame rate. Um, yeah, you're right. I, I like the one sentence better, uh, in the sense that I don't think it should be the job of stats to record every configuration setting at the time that stats. Like, you want to get the information you don't have. Not the information you already have. That's, I don't know if you do price here, but Varun doesn't necessarily guess to see that information in his architecture. Well, it's synchronously available at the time of get stats. So. I mean, through the peer connection. Okay. Yeah. So are you saying? Aren't some of these available in get settings or get configurations? Is max bitrate available somewhere? Max bitrate is not available in stats, but you, but you can use get parameters. So you can get which is so, so you can get parameters. Yeah. Also, except that you need a read to figure out which one you get. But that might be it might be a bit uh, crazy, possibly. I guess because if you do get get parameters and then you do set parameters, you need the same transaction ID. So oh, get um, parameters is synchronous. Right. Yeah, so it should be fine. If you go get parameters two times in a row, you yeah, as long them. as we know that oh, yeah, agree. I think if there is a get parameter then we can call peer connection dot get parameters, it should be fine. I think we have a problem but here. I think the question here was first that there is RTC is in the first question that we want to add RTC encoding parameter stats. I think that's one. And the second is what goes into it. Right. But, but if we don't want to uh, put, um, like, because we already have per encoding ID per 
simulcast layer stats in the outbound RTP. So if, if we are excluding get parameter settings uh, values, then the only thing that's that's missing uh, is the red, because that's what you need to know which which RTP right. stream this is. Yeah. Um, if that's the only thing we want, then perhaps we should not have a encoding parameter stationary, because it's just one field and we just add it to outbound RTP and then we're done. Uh, but I thought that if we want the more information that we should have a separate dictionary perhaps just for right yeah well yeah i like the which one the, i like the one liner okay um also you, you yeah. then i guess you like the previous slide yes uh, right. so just add red yeah to I would, like i would uh, definitely uh, I think none none of my uh, like none of my colleagues are on the on the call because it's too early in Finland. So I would definitely take it to the list uh, for the if they want any of the additional things. I think uh, I feel get if get parameters exist, uh, it should not be a problem for us to just go with a single red uh, line in the outbound stats. Uh, I believe we had some discussions in PR 482 or in issue 395, which made us build these two out, uh, these two proposals out, 482 and 485. So um, I don't have a strong objection or a counter proposal right now. I'm fine with dot red, but I would want the team to uh, people on our side to say that it's okay for them. Can we note uh, consensus on adding red, but no consensus on uh, encoding parameter sets? Yeah. Well, let's maybe be more optimistic consensus on adding red and needing confirmation whether or not to add the um, I get the sense, I get a more negative sense. Uh, mm. like, Consensus not adding. Yeah, we're I think we're close to consensus of not adding them, yes. uh, but we need to confirm it. Confirm, sure. Yes, let's do it that way. As a side note, I think we have a bug in get parameters. Uh, if you call get parameters twice in a row, you get a different transaction ID, mm -hmm. which yeah. is not correct because uh, it assumes that the only reason you call get parameters is because you intend to set parameters. Right. But if you have a library that, uh, or you call a sub function, then that library uh, now needs to have other means, other reasons to get the parameters. It'll now, when you get back to the main routine, it'll now change the transaction ID, which means the so call should be cached between the call calls that parameters. Between successive call to get parameters. Yeah, the transaction ID should remain the same unless until there's been a change. To the Can you file an issue to do that? Um, I'm not sure if that's necessarily something that you want to do. You could say that get parameters is the start of the transaction, so it's get a different ID. So you don't get two uh, different calls trying to do uh, different. Anyway, let, let's, get a let's discuss that issue. Something okay. Okay. Sure. So for discussion. Okay, so next slide. Good point. Oh, that's a good point. Uh, uh. Uh, so, is there a resolution on that last slide? The resolution is. Uh, add red and confirm that we don't want to add encoding parameters. Um, this issue is so now that we are talking about adding SVCs. Do we want SVC stats? I think we do. Problem: there's there's no SVC stats. Um, and thinking useful things to know would be uh, resolution, frame rate, and bit rate uh, per layer. So I'm proposing an SVC layer stats object uh, that looks like this, that's the, the, the um, layer with types. And then whether we want to go with you know, frame sense uh, and frames received, you know, different depending on direction, or if we want to have uh, it be called frames transmitted, then we can discuss in the PR, but uh, all other, in all other places we go with, with sent and received. So different members for different directions. Anyway, um, does it make sense to add this, this dictionary? So you can have one outbound RTP with multiple SVC layers as object. Oh, I actually thought right, of something. So if I'm, I, I guess what we're seeing here is that if five frames were sent for three different 
layers you would see for the individual layers you would see a counter go up uh, to one one or something like that and five in the outbound is that correct is that what you're thinking of uh, yes um, so I have a rather uh, uh, I have a comment here which is um, so uh, along with SVC we have this new weird thing which is Samacast without separate um, separate RTP streams. Without separate RTP streams. Right. That's the S modes in WebRTC, SVC. So um, when you talk about layer, we should. I think you um, should talk about how you identify that. Like um, typically, what you think of as a TID and an SID. Um, it's not necessarily that simple. Um, but um, we should talk about how to identify specifically what the layer is and also what the mode of the layer is. Okay. So you could have a like a temporal layer, you could have a spatial layer that can either be in simulcast or in SVC. I thought you would have, um, like based on the proposal we discussed earlier with the SVC, that you'd have an array of some sort describing each SVC layer. So the, la the layer here would be the as the index 0, 1, 2, 3. Uh, OK. What well, well, is well, well, well defined? Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, basically, you have it, it's, there's, there's a temporal identifier and a spatial identifier. So those two things together kind of describe a layer. So which data uh, type are they? What? Are they byte or integer? I mean, you, basically, if you had a, a byte for each one, you'd cover every known codec. Um, I mean, you could make it longer if you want. But, uh, yeah. Yeah. So, make the. Uh, yeah, an unsigned block. Is, uh, is SID the name? Well, it's basically spatial. The DID and SID num numbers. Yeah, so it's spatial ID and temporal ID, but the thing to realize is that uh, it's possible to have a it's possible to have a spatial ID represent a simulcast uh, encoding within uh, a there can be multiple simulcast encodings within a single RTP stream in some codecs, such as AB1. So, as an example, you could have an a, you know SID three. Could could mean you had three spatial SVC layers, or depending on the mode, it could mean three simulcast layers, also within a single RTP stream. Anyway, I'm basically saying I think I think the we should describe what the layer uh, exactly a little bit better how the, what the layer is, um, and maybe add a mode um, delineation so you're clear. What yeah. You're so I, I'm actually. Uh, I think we probably cannot. I think we should probably discuss this in a separate meeting because it already sounds more complicated. Because my question next is, we then need a dependency index to see what is dependent on what. Because how, like, what, if all simulcasts are within one RTP, how is that different from an SVC? Well, uh, it's different because of the dependencies. But uh, yeah, okay. we can talk about this offline. But basically, the mode describes the dependencies. Um, in a way that's hard necessarily to describe any other way. Yeah, and does the can the mode change? Uh, yes, uh, but the if it, the mode changed, then the number of layers and everything else would change. So you'd probably want to keep a separate set of stats. It would kind of be weird to mix modes with, you know, uh, ignoring the ignoring the issue about how do we uh, how do we uh, identify the layer or how do we know the relationship between layers? Just the basic idea of having one layer SVC layer stats object per layer with an individual width, height, frame sense, byte sense. Does that make sense? Can we? Yeah, I mean, I, I think what you're trying to do, what you might want to know, as an example, would be. Uh, well, there's, you know, the overall loss I'm experiencing on the whole thing. And certainly all the layers combined, right? That's a useful thing to know. That, that might well be sufficient in the sense that, um, you know, it's possible you, there'll be a difference in the loss that you get between layers. As 
to whether that's meaningful to any congestion control algorithm, I, I don't know why it would be. Um, you would just look, kind of look at your overall bandwidth availability and packet loss and then make, you know, the big question I have is what are you trying to, I mean, you, you, might, you might basically look at this in retrospect and try to conclude, you know, what your strategy ought to have been with respect to dropping layers or doing something. You might decide, hey, I left this enhancement layer going too long and was just experiencing a lot of loss, and once I dropped it, things got better. Yeah, so the, so first, I, I kind of like the, like the, the small amount of context here, which is this, okay, you'll say how many frames you have sent, you right. say how many devices sent, that gives you some uh, indication of whether you turn the layer, you or the platform turn the layer on or from. Right. And I think that's enough. Yeah, and you can calculate the loss. I like, I like, the, I like the idea. Yeah. Well, one consistency comment, I see we have a video source that's where width height, but in your handles that's why I'm frame width and frame height. Yeah, that's, also that's um, historical reasons. And about RTP strings also frame width height. Yeah. So if you're doing simulcast, you have to you know, look for frame width, frame height. If you're doing SVC, yeah. you have to look for right. width so height. So in, in this dictionary, there's a mix of audio and video uh, things. And I think there's naming was used to, <laughs> to be clear about what type of uh, I don't know, uh, but, but with, uh, with something is specific to a track, I guess it's, it's a, both audio and video, but okay. this is more specific, I guess. I don't know. Um, I think that's... Uh, what's the resolution of the OR here? The, the OR? I, I think we can decide that in the in the PR. I just want to know, okay. do we want this this sense object in general? And then we can figure out details later. So and it sounds like yes. Uh, yeah, it sounds, sounds, sounds like you should uh, go home and write, uh, write, the, write the PR. Okay, and yeah. uh, we'll add it once we like the PR. Sounds good. Next slide. Detecting the uh, digital. Okay. So uh, it's with the current, current metrics, it's hard to distinguish between glitches and low frame rates. Uh, if you're pulling against us, you can calculate averages, but you know, unless you're pulling way more often than you should be, it's hard to know. Uh, and so, you know, one proposal was to just say, like, oh, like glitch is such and such many milliseconds. But uh, there's a problem, like uh, two, 200 milliseconds uh, between two consecutive frames. Uh, that's it's great if you're, if you're running a 5 FPS right. video, but if you're running a 30 FPS video, it's, it's, it's actually a glitch, it's terrible. But uh, it's hard to define what a glitch is. Uh, so the proposal A is to just take the, the the maximum interframe delay that was recorded during the last second, um, which means, uh, yeah, so if you poll gets as one per se once per second, you'll have a very good idea about uh, glitches, and this will work even if you have like a, you only get one frame per 10 seconds, uh, it's, it's still gonna work, because you're gonna pull this and you're gonna see that's 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 zero point whatever uh, the, the, the delay will be ten uh, I guess um, and it's it's easy to understand but it's a maximum and it's it sort of has assumptions about how often you're pulling that stats uh, if you're pulling it once every ten seconds you you did miss if there was a glitch uh, so that's a argument against proposal A. But Argument for proposal A is easy to understand, easy to implement, and and thus gets the job done. Uh, proposal B would be um, more like a total glitches counter, uh, total glitches duration, uh, and I haven't done the exact wording here, but but we define a glitch as some percentage of uh, uh, deviation from the average frame rate that's you know based on recent frames or recent time or something. Um, can I get a sense from the room if I should go in direction A or B or something else if I write a PR trying to for, for glitches? What, what do we have today? So today I, I had a have question. Good. Yeah, Warren? So doesn't the um, doesn't the jitter buffer or doesn't the application, um, I won't say the application, doesn't the RTP stack, what is the 
duration between each frame and if it was skipped or or if there was an expectation if i'm expecting 500 mil like if i'm expecting 200 milliseconds and i get something at 250 doesn't it already know that i was expecting something at 200 milliseconds apart and yeah. define it on a per frame basis uh the deviation because i don't like the first one because it forces me to pull uh, and uh, frequently and if i don't want to pull frequently uh, i won't get this thing i won't get a heuristic over time the b i like because i get like anytime i pull i can look at total number of glitches and the duration so it gives me an average but my main question here is like instead of doing something based on heuristics which is what you're proposing i think in the example can't the uh, isn't the, the endpoint aware of like the deviation <coughs> from expectation but i don't think there's a definition by looking at the time i think if we want to have deviation from expectation we need to define how we measure expectation because it's based on what you receive Right. And yeah, but I think uh, yes, see. but so you, you can yeah. do the math. The expectation is the interframe timestamp. So timestamp at time A and timestamp at time B, and you know it was received uh, like they were generated two hundred milliseconds apart. Are you saying just and the, you're, looking at the last two frames, or are you look, saying look at the last second, or are you saying look at the last ten frames, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera. How no, cumulatively? From the beginning of the session. I believe there is an SFU that, that changes something or you know, because of simultaneous and SBC, you yeah, your right. expectation change. I, I don't think you can have a yeah, problem. but I don't think you can have an expectation based on the duration of the call because it could switch between between 60 FPS and then it goes down to 30 FPS after a while and that's that it shouldn't keep reporting that as a glitch. Right, but like if I'm like then it won't change the glitch, right? The glitch so if I just We have a glitch. <laughs> yes. uh, I think the only way to define so, the glitch is to know what was sent on, on that leg, on, the, on that peer coming. So if, and if, to compare the reception with the, the, the sender side. So if I weird out and say, we record the sum of intervals and the square of the sum of the intervals, you can calculate the mean and the standard deviation. Is that really okay? Uh, uh, that is, that would allow you to detect, detect that which is happening. Uh, uh, a couple of questions. So, one question I have is, is this before or after the zero? Um, before, <laughs> I didn't even think about that. Well, this is why I want to push back, because I know we, on the center side, we, I think we have a little, I'll call it creep, feature creep, where we start to have stats on the sources. <laughs> and on the, this side, they're called playback glitches. Uh, you know, uh, I'm worried that we're adding stats that have to do with playback effectively. And I was called playback and hitting, but in the way it's defined, it's that the frame has not been received. I think this has and to do with, with receive. I think the, the yeah. visual effect will be that you see the user sees the glitch, but we're not we're not assuming that we're not yes we're not we're not attempting to measure. Like how is the video tagged? Right, you know, we had the discussion yesterday at the media group is that you have the digital buffer, then there is the red ring buffer, then there is we need to be couple at which point we measure. And yeah. eventually there will be buffer before and after what you propose uh, that will contribute to, to the perception of a beach, right? So if we understand the reports that there were, you know, two hundred glitches and yet I think the, the definition of glitch should be left to the application, not providing more stats to, to get there might be interesting. I agree with Varun that if you have to pull too often, it, it's kind of kill the purpose. So no, what is the right value to provide them so they can, they no, can uh, I guess what I'm hearing is that it's not so much that we are trying to detect glitch, but trying to detect network things that could have caused glitch 
Yes. Or sometimes close to Yes. So, so the real city is, I guess, around transmission, and you need that point to be before the detailed buffer. I'm, I'm sensing that we need to be uh, specific so that there's no misunderstanding here about what, what you mean by glitch, and that we should go some, something like direction of B without having decided exactly how we. So why do you care about what just before the jitter buffer? The jitter buffer. Uh, no, I would, I would prefer it to be after digital. Right? Okay. Uh, it's just I hadn't thought about that. And I think there's, yeah. there's several metrics in our stack that I read the definition and I, and I, I don't know if it's before or after digital. Or if it's yeah. before or after digital. Well, can you stop fighting bugs? <laughs> I think it is. I think it is after. Go over. I think it is after the yeah, jitter yeah, buffer yeah. because if it was before the jitter buffer, we already have some metrics for this because you're looking at delay while in playback. So you want it after the jitter buffer, after the jitter buffer is removed or uh, skipped frames. So let's, let's make some assumptions here. Even in the SFU case or the SVC case, it's one and so forth. The FPX is supposed to be stable by segment right mm -hmm. so it's not the variation are not too fast i'm going to check there will be a step at one time and then it's going to stabilize again is that something we can we can report um, the stability of the mps or the of interfront delay which is the same right? that would be a separate metric i guess like uh, this would show up as a glitch uh, with proposal b uh, like the first few frames would look like glitches if it goes down. Uh, it might be useful to have a. No, but I mean, the problem here was to detect the expectation. Mm -hmm. oh. But we can infer the expectations, supposing that the FPS is constant always for a certain amount of time. It might drop and go up at, you know, at one, one frame to the next, but then it remains stable after. So the curve you sampling is supposedly a linear, like step, uh, constant per time segment curve, correct? So uh, I think uh, I think it actually makes sense to record uh, the sum of it. The sum of intervals you don't need because that's equal to elapsed time. The sum of square intervals. Sum of square intervals. Because then you can calculate for it's like between, as well. Then you can calculate between any two samples uh, what the average arrival rate was and what and the mean. what the standard deviation rate of, of the. Yeah, that's some, so proposal C is the square of the inter frame delay yeah. and just sum it up and let it let yes. the I just write some write some text saying what, saying why this is useful. Okay, that sounds. Like it solves all of these problems. Okay. Cool. cool. Next slide. Um, all right. This is clarify quality limitation reasons. So we have a lean on that says that if we are CPU limited, bandwidth limited, or other, or none. I'm not sure why we have other. Anyway, uh, what do we report if we have uh, if we are both CPU limited and bandwidth limited at the same time? And the reason why this is uh, hard to answer is because these are not independent variables, and you are you're kind of guesstimating these. You, you 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 try to do something, and you notice that oh, I'm using a lot of CPU, so you go down. This will affect the bandwidth. Uh, like estimating bandwidth is kind of the same. You, you start increasing, and then, oh, I'm sorry. So so if, if it overlaps, why oh, yeah, are you making an item? Uh, so we made an email to. Um, so having limiting factors, uh, CPU yes, bandwidth yes. Or oh, release of value, or less. Because it's it's a deterministic list, right? It's In the code, you have a CPU probe, you have a bandwidth probe, congestion control maybe. The implementation has several booleans, but uh, exactly how they, like, again, they're not. They're not independent, so right. But th this is this is implementation specific, right? Yes. 
So this is yeah. why I want to actually make this um, proposal C remove. <laughs> uh, we want this one. Anyway, what we ended up doing in Chrome is to prefer bandwidth so, over C. I, and okay, but let's say I have this information as a web developer. What do I do with it? What do you do with it? I just report it. Oh, it's it's um, no diagnostics, just like why yeah, why was this? Yeah, it's, uh, so, it's interesting yeah. when uh, that, that, that were that were bandwidth limited and uh, correlated with the number of people who report back that saying that they call us traffic. Can you switch codecs or something? I mean, if, uh, if it's CPU it's, uh, or bandwidth. I mean, it 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 it, 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 it basically gives you some. Mm -hmm. it, I mean, if if the bandwidth li limited is limiting is the problem, then you go for. If you want, then, then you try to try to find a way to the har harder compression. If you, if the CPU is limited, is problem. You try you try to find something that consumes less CPU, but uh, or tell tell the customer to buy and buy uh, something with newer hardware. <laughs> it's but sometimes there are too many. Yeah, sometimes the people have other things running on their CPU on their on their systems, which causes the CPU. So it's, the CPU tends to be quite interesting when it happens. Um, and for bandwidth, there are other ways to like make some assumptions if bandwidth is actually the case, uh, because you can do some pre-call tests. You can like measure what's happening in, during the call. You can do it after the call. You can do it in background. Uh, so C in the case of bandwidth, we have a lot of information. In CPU, you don't know what else is running. So when C when it is CPU in, uh, CPU limited, and if it's CPU limited for multiple cycles of get stats, you can actually simply show an alert that you know there is processing issues right now, and the user can then go and see if there is anything else that is consuming. The uh, the CPU and close it if needed. Yes, yeah, so, so two two things. One one is the the <coughs> broader like how many calls are bad kind of questions, and then the the just on a in application use case can be to like if the user is experiencing like have a bad experience, this could tell you, hey, you have a bad network, or hey, you have your your CPU one. Which could could make the user less angry, but, but this issue isn't about having policy limitations. Re reason it's about clarifying what to do when multiple values might apply. Well, one comment on that: on the on the other value, it's probably why the other value is there. If I were to guess, is that if the if the value is none, you you basically you can infer that quality is fine. Yeah. Right. If it's any of the other three values, then quality is not fine. So that's a bull thing. Yes. And, but, and if it's CPU or bandwidth, you know why it's not fine. But if it's other, it means quality is not fine, or we either don't know, or yes, we don't. So any value other than none means I am not sending the, the resolution I am trying to send. Is that in the spec? Because I was going to ask for the right. definition of quality. You could, you could have, uh, I'm, or I'm not sending the, the list I could. Right. My camera is 720p, but that's not what I'm sending right now. Why? Oh, because I'm CPU limited. So this is on the sender side only? Yes, the sender side only. Yeah. Um, so. Right. And none here can also be none can also be source limited. So none means like if your if your card is not changing as fast or whatever and you cannot capture that many pixels because it's too dark, or um, then it can be none. But like the the thing that I'm trying to avoid is uh, the situation where it turns to both, because if you have both, then CPU both CPU and bandwidth, and if more things track both, that will be in the same conundrum as we are today, because we know that in many cases it's CPU and or bandwidth, and if you if it comes to both, then Basically, we have not we have no way to move forward. We're back to a situation where we don't know the answer. So either proposal A sounds 
okay proposal b sounds uh, also interesting because it allows the user agents to um, if they have a different algorithm they can actually tell you which one it is you can also add the string both <laughs> or you could break them up into separate boolean stuff that would suggest that i think the reason we didn't we didn't go with uh, like a vector or multiple uh, metrics was because because they are uh, inherently uh, dependent and guess guesses kind of very realistic so um like if you have two booleans and it's, it says the cpu true but bandwidth false or the other way around you know you might infer that that oh i'm not cpu limited or i'm not bandwidth limited uh, whereas that's not really true it's just that you don't know that you're bandwidth limited because if you are so CPU limited that you are not using up all the value. Right. You don't know. And that's why we made it simpler as just one value. Uh, but but yeah. So so we just I just wanted to clarify the, the heuristic that the current excess is bandwidth over CPU, but it's it's equally valid to say that you know the implementation can pick any value it wants depending on what it thinks is the most limiting factor. Yeah. The question again on the situation, if I'm in a situation where it's both, does that mean that if I had more CPU or I had better bandwidth, I would get better quality? Or do I need both of them to get better quality? So if you're limited by both, then, then uh, having better, uh, either of them wouldn't help you, uh, unless it, uh, it might help you a little bit, like there's multiple steps. But let's say you're one step below. Oh, I see. Yeah. Right. Because right, so. I think the limitation comes from it's like two step down, and uh, like you might have enough. It goes back to implementation, but you might uh, there may be a bandwidth limitation which says go to doing like four hundred uh, whatever, uh, like HD, but then CPU limits it further and takes it to three sixty, right? So in this case both are true but actually one over the other like maybe the answer is cpu in this case because that's the thing that caused it to go further down uh, what i'm getting from the implementation in chrome is that this may not be clear because of the way they've implemented it but someone else may implement it differently and they may know which one is the more limiting factor and i think that's why proposal b is preferred because if we go with Chrome can implement their stuff in proposal B. If we go with proposal B, then I think we can make you know just have have a, a note to say that if if the implementation can't dis distinguish, then it should prefer bandwidth. Then that way you get the cake and eat it too or something. <laughs> make it cool. Anyway, I, I just do think we have ten minutes left in this session. I think we should move on. Um, was a resolution yeah, I think we can quibble over this in the in in the PR. <laughs> okay, let's do that. Sorry, resolution. Uh, the resolution is we'll, we'll waste more time. Uh, okay, so audio samples. Okay, the problem is we have we have this like audio energy sample total sample duration. We have sample counters. Uh, we have various the echo echo return loss. You know, there's various counters and metrics based on uh, on audio samples, and all is well is and good except we didn't really think about channels, right? If you have multiple channels, you have let's you have you can have stereo or mono or or whatever. Um, and it's it's not clear what you should do with these counters, right? If I have twice as many channels, should should these counters go up twice as fast or not? Current implementation does not. Like even though you have two two channels, both receiving ten samples, uh, the counter does not go up by twenty. It goes up by ten. Do we have any case whatsoever where it's possible to receive a sample in one channel and not the other? Uh, currently, that's not possible. 
Uh, you could get let's keep it non possible as a good matter. Yes, so that's my suggestion. What what could be different is you have different audio levels on different channels, which means you know if you in order to use total audio energy like uh, count values, you need to be able to divide by sample durations, which like they're all tied together. Uh, but my point is that if you want per channel metrics. That's that's more metrics, one per channel. So you would need to add new metrics anyway. And since we're talking about the existing ones, which is just a single single one, we should just keep it as the, the value goes up the way it's implemented today. We should just clarify it. And, and unless there's any objection, that's that's the PR I'll, I'll make. Sounds good. I think this uh, sounds okay. Yeah. Uh, immediately, I was thinking of average, and then I thought, hey, yeah, averaging some uh, levels complicated. Yeah. So this is good because then, then it's simple, and we don't break things. And if we want to support uh, finer metrics for multiple channels in the future, well, we'll have to revisit this anyway. So we don't lose anything by by having a simple version of the metrics. Sounds good. Thanks. Good. Go with the proposed solution. Yes. Okay. Good. Moving on. Uh, um, right, if you do an ICE restart, you can get the same uh, ICE candidates and ICE candidate pair stats objects, and you don't know which, you know, from which ICE generation these belong to. Uh, proposal A is to add the uh, ICE U frag to RC ICE transport, and that way you can tell. Um, and proposal B, like so proposal A would be consistent with trend implementation. You just add another few. Uh, proposal B is to say that the current implementation is a bug. Like if you do an I3 start, even if, if the candidate is the same IP address, you, you should say, hey, this, this doesn't conceptually refer to the same object anymore, which means the ID should be different. So it's a bug that you have the same ID before and after. And the way the way you tell that they don't belong to the same ICE generation is that they were they have different ideas. Uh, so, does anyone have an opinion on this? Um, so, what would happen after ICE restart has finished? Does this now that we don't have stats ended anymore? When do these go away? So they don't go away. Or, or I guess they do go away, but there's no there's no event for it. Okay. Uh, so the question is, the next time you call get stats, should the ID just be different, and that's how you know, or is it okay to have the same ID as before because it's the same like, like same values as before? But so, you should infer by the ID frag. So changing the ID would mean that they're not referenced anywhere. That right. So you could still find out. So you can infer that these are no longer in use that way. Uh, well, they would, right, well, the old ones would, wouldn't be referenced anymore, but they would also not exist anymore. I think they would have ended. Right. So I do have a question what happens if you're in the middle of an ice restart and you call guys test. Because then you, you might have candidates generated. Well, this step, what does that return about? Does it only return the candidates that are? That are uh, Wouldn't that depend on make? It returns all the uh, local. I think, Yanivar, that would depend on make. On what? But it also depends on make before break versus make before break. As in, if you already have a connection, you do an ice restart, it doesn't uh, uh, reset your existing candidates. Like, you can still use your. Uh, right. Like you're still using your old transport until uh, the ice restart is complete. So that's why, in that the case, I'm wondering against that. Then would you see both? Probably. You probably wanna... Yeah, you're right. close. So yeah, so either either you'd see two objects with the same IP address, or you would see one object with, with one IP address. But right. So then, what's uh, the? How would you know which one is the new one, which one the old one? Well, so, yeah, so the, so the question is, does, does it matter? I guess is is do you do you want to know? This is. So, I guess so can I have another clarifying question. The IP address may be the same, but the port change. Right. 
it's not necessarily change. With an ice restart, the, the port will not change? Well, uh, some of the candidates come from the other side. The other side might, not, might decide not to generate new ones. You have no guarantees of what the other side is doing. I think including the proposal A is a no brainer. Yes, we should do it. So, should we go with proposal A? Um, I think they're not mutually exclusive, uh, but I think it's it's less of a concern than if we have proposal A. Decision? Decision, let's go with proposal A and possibly future discussions outline the proposal yeah, B. Continue, continue discussing proposal B. Okay, sounds good. Next slide. Oh, there's only two slides left. So there's uh, there were two oh, issues. Yeah, there's two, two issues on data channels uh, added. Uh, the first one is well, so there's no there's no SCTP transfer stats, uh, and the question here is uh, should should we expose round trip time measurements based on the SCTP transport? Because currently we have round trip times based on RTCP and based on ice things. I heard that Firefox does not do ice things. There's some comments and issues saying that. So it would be useful to have round trip time based on the SETP. Um, so that's the proposal is to add it. I, I saw this reference to the RFC uh, SP info <coughs> SRTP. Um, I, it's, I, I get the impression this is a bit, it's, it said it's a, the current smooth round trip time in seconds, which sounds very underspecified to me. Um, so I, I don't know if, if, if that might be a question for the PR, but the question for this group is should we add an um, SCRTP transport, SCTP transport stats object with whatever round trip time we find? based on SCTP RFCs. I think this doesn't really like... Yes, I... The problem is it's, 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 uh, it's like an instantaneous stat, not a an accumulative stat. Yeah, I was hoping for an accumulative, uh, like, number of round trip time measurements. So, uh, uh, like one cumulative stat could use here is minimum RTT, which has some, some use for it. Minimum RTT. Uh, if I... I would uh, think that if we... That if the only thing that is defined is the RFC 6458 field, we should uh, uh, reference that and just say, okay, we report this value. If, it, if it's exposed at uh, the standardized API, because if it's not exposed, then uh, it gets carry and it's implementation specific. So, yeah, Current smoothed round trip time. I mean, the, when the word smoothed the course occurs in a stat definition, I go, no. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But the, but the reporting what the what the protocol machine currently has of these values is seems like a good idea. Yeah. So, so an action item could be: is there a an accumulative one that we could use instead? But assuming there isn't, this is the one we would we would add. Uh, yeah. That seems logic. Right. We have. The document consensus on that. <laughs> why can't you? Why can't we sum the? Because we have no idea what happened in between. We have no idea how often to take the sum. Yeah. Okay. So it's not exposed in a in a relevant manner. Okay. So probably in the we can look, look that up. So next slide. We uh, were supposed to work at three. Uh, I wonder uh, how we are doing in terms of so this slides. is the the last slide. Great. <laughs> the last the resolution on the last issues is that we we try to find uh, we try to see if there is uh, other uh, accumulative uh, round trip time measurements that we can expose, but if this is the only one that's publicly documented in the API, 
and that's the one we use. But regardless, we do want to run trip time stats based on SCP. So we can go with this proposal for a version of is it a quick one or? Um, it's, it's, make it quick. It's, we can make it quick. It's, it's, there's not a lot of thought being put on this. It's just a, a similar one about do we want uh, the, the SCTP congestion control? So, uh, we can, uh, so see when the in and the fair amount are probably both of our values. So, and see when tells you how much the other side is, is willing to receive. Um, so uh, this is uh, if this I don't I don't know if it's needed, but it's not, but uh, buffer amount is not very really relevant. Okay, that's all. Um, okay, okay. I think more discussion is probably needed. I don't have a proposal here, but okay. yeah, it's curious so it's if anyone has information about like SCTP and congestion control. You know. Lenoir. Lenoir, yeah. So oh, he's probably asleep. So I think this, this kind of information would be very useful for, like, for example, if you wanted to build over RTC over SCP, right? Yeah. Or RTC has this kind of information internally. <coughs> I don't think it's necessary to put it because mm -hmm. of the reasons brought up here. You mean what you transport? <laughs> like what transport? Like it might have something like this. Yeah, I think if you if you actually want to use this to inform your like your application logic about how much to send or something, I think guess that is the wrong API for it. But if it is a diagnostic purpose, then this might be something to uh, But yeah, yeah. If, if, so and I guess I've, another proposal is to close okay. this issue. Uh, and open an issue on getting this feedback information from a proper API. I think I have already been for this. Right, so, and I can I agree with that. Um, I've not even wondered at all. There's nothing to do now. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> it's a strong prayer. Uh, does anyone want to object to to go, to go that way <laughs> here? Um, no, uh, closing, closing the issue was yeah, wonderful. Close <laughs> the issue uh, and refer to an open an issue on the NV. Okay. Close it. She just wants the copy. <laughs> you're, you're I, feel like, I feel like I want the copy, yes. <laughs> okay, well, let's let, let that conclude my wonderful test round. Yeah. That's perfect. Perfect. You, you're alone on that one. There is no consensus from the group on that one. I don't know yet. I don't know. So we're back at. Uh,